Hello booktube, this is the second time since I broke the ice and I got myself in a mood I decided to make another video. I have, I realize I haven't done a used book haul video in a while and I thought I had shown these books but then I looked at my last five videos that I've done recently and I haven't shown any of the used books I've gotten at thrift stores, the book nook, uh, the Blue Stockings bookshop. So I thought I would do that. Get those so I can put them away, put them in the right order here in the library down here in the lower level. It is still December the tw December the 9th. It's a Thursday. It is 6.14 in the evening now. I came down the lower level. I didn't want to haul all these books up into my study upstairs and they're all stacked down here so I might as well just show them. So I'll just show you the books and some I have doubles of and let me see like what are the doubles? Let me see I put the doubles somewhere. I put the doubles over there anyway so I don't have the doubles with me but I had two of these the Great Plains this is by Ian Fraser. It's like a history, history of America, the Great Plains. And I thought I didn't have it. I collect his, his books, they're nonfiction. But the one I don't have, that I did have two copies of, is called The Res. But I have this one already. But I collect them, the Great Plains. Extraordinary One Thinks of Such an American Originals, John McPee, Wallace Steiger, Edward Hoglan, Peter Matheson, Evans S. Connell. They're all essay writers. And Anyway, I picked that up. I picked this up at uh, the Bibles to Mexico thrift store just around the where we live. It's called A, A Novel, A Given Day by Dennis Lehane. He writes, I think, primary crime, but this is historical fiction. And the reason why I picked it up is it's on Boston. It says here, set in Boston at the end of the First World War, best-selling best author Dennis Lehane's extraordinary eighth novel unflinchingly captures the political and social unrest of a nation caught at the crossroads where past meets future filled with a cast of richly drawn, unforgettable characters. The Day Given tells the story of two families, one black, one white, swept up in the maelstrom of revolutionaries, anarchists, immigrants, ward bosses, Brahmins, and, and ordinary citizens, all engaged in a battle for survival and power. Coursing through the pivotal events of a turbulent epic, it explores the crippling violence and irresistible, irrepressible exuberance of a country at war with and in the thrall of itself. But it just sounded kind of interesting. And plus I collect books on Boston. This is the Topeka School, a novel by Ben Lanier. I have two of his other novels. I picked this up at, I think, Salvation Army. Post for $17, I got it for like, you know, 50 cents. But I have two other of his novels that I have read, and I haven't read this one, The Topeka School. This is a stories by Lori Moore. I collect her writings. I didn't have this. This is short stories like Life by Lori Moore. This is a Morton, a Norton edition of John, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. As you all know, I collect the Norton critical editions. It's not underlined as far as I can see. Wait a minute. I just saw an underline. I try to get them when they're not underlined. I just saw something. Sometimes they just underline the first couple of pages, but I don't think I see any. 
Anyway, I picked that up. This I had two copies of. I had a paperback copy of this. And this is one of my favorite writers, is Rick Moody. And I had this in paperback, Purple America. And I was so pleased to find this at Salvation Army. It's a, it's a, it has a remainder mark on it, but it's the first edition of Purple in America. Uh, who's one of my favorite writers, Rick Moody. And I was really pleased. He, he's famous for his novel, The Ice Storm. And uh, he wrote a book of poetry called The Ring of the Brightest Angels Around Heaven. Uh, he's written for the New Yorker, the Esquire, the Paris Review, Harper's, Grand Street, Details, the New York Times. He wrote a novel called Gordon, Garden State, I think it was made into a movie. So I found this. I was really pleased to find this. I found this at Salvation Army. It's a biography on Chopin. It's called Chopin in Paris, The Life and Times of the Romantic Composer by Ted Sulez. I can't pronounce his name. He had, either he was married or he lived with the very famous writer George Sand. But I didn't have anything on him and it's on Paris, Chopin in Paris. So I picked that up. I found this novel at I think I found it at Blue Stockings Bookshop, The Volunteer, a novel by Salvador Chamboni, the National Book Award finalist. I could have picked this up at the book nook, but I'm not sure. But it looked interesting. Uh, a small boy speaking an unknown language is abandoned by his father at an international airport. The only, with only the clothes on his back and a handful of money jammed in the pocket of his coat, so begins the volunteer. But in order to understand this heartbreaking and def indefensible decision, the story must return to the moment decades earlier when a young man named Vala Fade, almost on a whim, enlists in the United States Marine Corps to fight in Vietnam. Valdi puts in motion an unimaginable chain of events which sees him go to work for insidious people with intentions he cannot yet grasp from the Cambodian jungle to a flop house in Queens to a commune in New, New Mexico. Valdi's path traces a secret history of life on the margins of America culminating with an inevitable and terrible reckoning. That sounds pretty interesting for me. So I picked that up. And then I picked up... I think I got this at the book nook. Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk by Ben Fountain. Oh, it's one of those novels that takes like an Iraqi war kind of person, characters involved in that or something. Anyway, it looked interesting. I found an Evelyn Wan, The Loved One. I have this already. It's like a satire. I think I showed this one. The Secret Sisterhood, The Literary Friendships of Jane Austen, Charlotte Bonte, and El George Eliot and Virginia Woolf. I think I showed this one already. This is by Emily Medorkiwa and Alma Clara Sweden Sweden. I collect novels on Jane Austen, writers on Jane Austen, Charlotte Bronte, uh, George Eliot, Virginia Woolf. They're all my favorite writers. I had this in paperback. I collect the writings of John Gardner. I had this as King's Indian. I had this in an old paperback. This is an old hardback, but I don't know. I, I like the cover. It was published in 1974. I really like all his writings. This is a. I picked this up at the book nook. 
The Great Circle, a novel by Maggie Schittstead. This also looked interesting. Uh, an unforgettable, me memorizing new novel from one of the most exuberantly gifted novelists of her generation. Uh, this was uh, a finalist for the Booker. I didn't know that when I bought it. Ranges from the Prohibition era of Montana to the wilds of Alaska to wartime London to modern Los Angeles in an epic tale of two extraordinary women whose fates collide across geographicals, geography, geogra, geographies, geographies in centuries. This goes on and on. This looks really interesting. The Great Circle by Maggie. Said. And then I, I you know, I, I showed you a while back my Moby Dick collection, which when I dehauled, I got a lot of a lot of them, but I kept some. And I, I found this edition at the Book Nook, and I really liked it, so I bought it. it cost me two or three dollars. This is Moby Dick or the Whale commentary by Howard Mumford Jones by Herman Melville. I really like this edition. It's in perfect condition. It's really a nice book. And I thought I would add it to my Moby Dick collection. It has the thing on the whale. What I have to do is that many years ago, I, well, over the years, I've tried to read it. And I get halfway through and then I stop. But maybe next year, 2022, I'll finally read it. I found this novel at the Book Nook by Andrania Romano Lax, The Spanish Bow. It takes place during the Spanish Civil War. It's about a musician who plays, I think, the violin or the viola or something. But it looked uh, really interesting, so I picked it up. Then I found this at the Book Nook. <laughs> A Hunter S. Thompson. <laughs> it's just a little novella. I was really surprised to find this at the book nook. I found it in a box of junk. But it's called Screw Jack by Hunter S. Thompson. Uh, so I found this little Hunter S. Thompson little thing I didn't have in my Hunter S. Thompson collection. I was really surprised how. You never know what's going to come into the book nook. You never know. And then I found at Goodwill this book of short stories by Eileen Gelchrist, which I collect her writings. Uh, a book of stories, Drunk with Love. And I also found her Falling Through Space, The Journals of Ellen Gelchrist. I found this at, at Goodwill here near where I live. I really like her writings. She's a southern writer. She's from Mississippi, Jackson, Mississippi, where I went to seminary. So I found this at Bibles to Mexico, Shocking Paris, Celine Chagall, and Outside of Monte Perez's. It's like a book, it's like a art history book on the artist at that time period. Uh, for several decades before World War II, a group of immigrant artists, including these artists, dominated the art scene there in Paris. They were collectively called the School of Paris, name given by art critics to set them apart from French-born most of these foreigners were Jewish. Many came from the from the Russian Empire. Mo most could barely speak French. Most intended to live in France forever. It just goes on and on. Anyway, it just looked interesting, so I got it. And this is a book of a of an artistic family, literary, who lived in Spain during the dictatorship up into the Spanish Civil War. It's called The Age of Disenchantments, the epic story of Spain's most notorious, notorious 
Literary Family in the Long Shadow of the Spanish Civil War by Aaron Shulman. So, I got this book. One thing about these two books, they're underlined, which I don't like. But, I only paid 50 cents for them. And it's one of my favorite subjects. Uh, about literary figures in Spain during and bef during the dictatorship and during the Spanish Civil War, and it just looked interesting. It's historical, literary kind of history kind of thing. So I picked up this one. Also, is underlined, probably by the same person. See, it's underlined, but I can live with it. I like the art in it. So, so these are the thrift store books I got. I can put them away now. I also got this book at Goodwill, 13 American Arguments Enduring Debates That Define and Inspire Our Country by Howard, Howard Finman. Yeah, it has like, uh, it has who was a person, who was an American, the role of faith, the limits of individualism, uh, presidential power, war and, demo and de uh, dem uh, diplomacy, the environment, just different questions that we face now as Americans in this upheaval, political upheaval that we're going through right now. So the ones I really were excited about was the Hunter S. Thompson Screw Jack, this great edition of Moby Dick, The Whale by Herman Melville. I just like the illustrations in it. It's just it's perfect condition. Duck is deckle edges. This novel looks really interesting, The Great Circle by Maggie Shipston. I always like the writings of John Gar Gardner, The King's Indian. And Topeka School by Ben Lanier, I look forward to reading. And my one I was really pleased to find was Purple America by Rick Moody. It's in perfect condition. Looks even brand new. I don't even think it was even red. But I was really pleased to find that. So check out Rick Moody's writings. Uh, I've just always enjoyed his, his books. Uh, I have them over there uh, in the back. He wrote Garden State, The Ice Storm, The Ring of Brightest Angels Around Heaven. He's written a lot of books besides. This one came out in 1997, it says the first edition. <laughs> so per this is my gem. So yeah, that's the used book haul. And I can show those. I've shown those. Now I can put them away here down the lower level. I don't have anything else down here I've been reading that I can show you. I did read some short stories out of here, Drunk with Love by Helen Gelwis. I can show you her books. Hold on. Here's Alan Galvis, Nora Jean, Life and Stories by her. And then I have Alan Galvis, Light Can Be Both Wave and Particle Stories by Helen Gal Galcrest. And then she wrote Net of Jewels. I think these are short stories, a novel. This is a novel by her. 
And then I have, this is another novel, Sarah Con Conley by Alan Galvis. Then Victory Over Japan, Stories by Helen Galvis. And these are her collected stories. Uh, I've always enjoyed reading her short stories. I haven't read her novels, but I've read her short stories and I've always enjoyed them. She lives in New Orleans. I, th I think she's in the 80s now, but I really recommend her writings if you like short stories, Alan Gomez. So now I have her journals, another volume of her short stories, Drunk with Love, a book of stories that I can add to these other ones of hers. So yeah, I like, I really like her writings. So, but, uh, yeah. So I'll just, I'll download this into my YouTube channel. Uh, all these books are worth reading, I, in my, my estimation. So, once again, I do thank you for the new subscribers and do thank you for watching these videos. I know they're kind of sloppy and they're not edited and they're not perfect, but I just want to show you these used books, the kind of books that I like to to have in my library, books I want to read as I grow older. Uh, yeah, I like reading, like I said, I read short stories by Helen Galvis, and, and I really, I've read a lot of Rick Moody and I like reading about Paris, and I like John Gardner's writings. He's written a lot of books. Uh, the Sunlight Dialogues, Nickel Mountain, they're just... Unfortunately, he died in a motorcycle accident. He was going around a corner in his motorcycle, and he lost control, and he got killed. But he's really worth reading. This, I don't know what this is about, but I'm going to check it out. The Topeka School by Ben Lanier. So I'll sign off and hope you have a good Friday, a good weekend. And until next time, bye.